Well, hello everyone and welcome to my cottage on the hill. Grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, your chocolate milk, or your mimosa if that's how you are rolling right now. Today, it's all about the interior of the cottage. I'm gonna share lots of updates with you. Updates in my office, in the master bathroom, in my bedroom. Well, just a number of things throughout the cottage. But I wanna give you a big reminder. Put it on your calendar, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, April 2nd, the day, yes, after Stuart's birthday on April Fool's Day, we're going to do a Linda Vodder Live, and I'm going to answer all of those questions, or maybe not all of them, <laughs> but, but a number of them that you've been asking me about, how I'm settling in, how I feel about it emotionally, the transition from the fairy tale house to the storybook cottage. We're going to go... Uh, we're going to get real. Let's talk. And we'll do that on April 2nd at around 2 o'clock. But enough of that. We've got flowers to arrange. We've got rooms to look at. What do you say, Stuart? Let's I think we it. need to get started. Let's do it. Welcome to my office. As kind of a rewind, let me remind you about some of the changes that I made. We installed these Billy bookcases with a birch veneer, and I love the way they turned out. Initially, we put in these three tall bookcases with the extender on top, and when I say extender, that's this section up here that makes them really, uh, I guess, grow, if you will, from this height all the way almost to the ceiling with just enough space above there for storage and some kind of decorative item. Now, I also added these side sections. These came in subsequent to our putting in the three tall ones, and I love the way they look because I can display things on them. So I have on both sides, so that it's symmetrical, I've got these black framed prints, and I love the way they look. And by the way, these were very inexpensive. I got these at Bed Bath & Beyond years ago, and they actually have kind of a, a matting around them that's intended for guests at weddings to write their well wishes around some kind of photograph. But I love the way they look and so I just put my own prints inside them. Now I want to give a shout out to my two friends that stopped by last week from West Virginia all that way and she gifted me a beautiful thrift store item. Look at this. More importantly look at the plum tones in it. I love the way it looks and she even brought some of these branches because you know in my garden life I like to bring the outside in and it holds a special place of honor right here. I just do do love it. And then I've actually kind of taken the time to style the rest of the bookcases. I've still got a little bit of zhuzhing to do but I think overall they don't look too bad. I've got my garden journal displayed out pretty prominently and in a location that's just at writing height. So I can come in here and I can record day to day what's going on. Not a lot's been going on because I haven't had a lot in to record of what's in bloom because there's nothing in bloom here. <laughs> We're still waiting, aren't we, Stuart? Yes. Um, but that also tells me that I need to remind you about the fact that I'm going to have a new garden journal that's going to be coming out in April. This is a 10-year version. Mine is going to be a five-year version. And it will be just the right size and a companion piece to the elegant and edible garden. And it really will just give you a place to record all of those things that I felt were important to record in the evolution of a garden. And I'm so excited to start my new garden journal as I start my new garden. And by the way, Stuart, if you want to just slowly torque your camera, look out there, well, just out the outside window? the window. Your Chinese, no, wrong window, nope. Stuart. The oh, Chinese, my God. yeah, my God. The, your Chinese snowball viburnum. Look there. There. They're turning that wonderful limey green I love so much. And yes, I will give a tutorial on how I prune it up. 
That was one of the questions one of you uh, followers had. And it's almost impossible for me to answer everybody's questions. So what I'm going to try to do is just highlight a few that you have asked me that have come in more than once and I'll address those. And of course, next week when we do our live, you can ask me almost anything you want to. Now, as I was styling styling my office, I guess in general, I came upon these absolutely gorgeous, you may have seen them yourselves, these trailing jasmine, blooming jasmine at Trader Joe's. They are in full bloom right now and look at all of these buds. But what I love about it is it's got that plum color echo that I think looks great in my office. And then I've also got some topiary over here that is just trying to trying to kind of get its spring groove on because you know they really want to be outside. Yeah. So I'm, I am starting to feed them now gently, and then before too long, we've got about two, not quite two weeks, so almost three weeks to our last frost date, which is April fifteenth. So I'm always keeping that in mind. Now, Stuart, right behind you over here is another one of these gorgeous jasmine. Is that not just spectacular? Very spectacular. And last year, it really is pretty. After they Looks finished, like it exploded. After they finished <laughs> blooming, I planted these in the urns on my front porch. Here's an answer to a question a number of you had, and that was, what was the book that I had in my office where I showed the vignette that was an inspiration? for the patio out front, and it's William Yoward's At Home. And I will put a link. This is a gentleman who passed fairly recently, and he's got a whole, um, a whole line of books that are just really, really wonderful about entertaining, I think maybe about decorating, and I just love them. They have a, a, a wonderful disposition to them. And then this is, oh, wow. yeah, that is the picture that I had as my muse for the patio up front. And pretty soon, hopefully, mine will be as profuse and blooming and bullion as this is. Now, this leads me to a tip and my first tip of the day. And that is one thing I have noticed in the cottage as I was going through and weaning out so many of my books. And a lot of them were like old friends that I just hadn't visited in a while. Some of them were fairly new books that I just hadn't had time to go through them. So what I've decided to do is around the cottage, I have just staged some of these. In this case, it's a cookbook holder. And I love it because it matches the color of the bookshelf. Yeah, Stuart, did nice. you notice that in the floor? And I can leave it in here with whatever is kind of my inspirational book for the week, whether it's about garden design or flower arranging or interiors or whatever. And I can leave it here. And then throughout the course of the day, as just a little gift to myself, I can just thumb through the pages. And if I come across the one or two images that really speaks to me, I can then open it at that page and I can secure it. And that way, if I don't have time to sit down for, you know, 30 minutes, an hour to look through a book, I nevertheless get just a little tiny moment where I can take a mindful breath and I can look at something beautiful that I already have. Now, these books, I think probably you can get them used or new. And I, again, I will try to put up a link, but they're wonderful and for pennies, for less than the price sometimes of a magazine, you can have a beautiful book that inspires you too. Now, going around the office over here to my bulletin board. Slowly but surely, I'm beginning to fill up my two inspiration bulletin boards. So as I go through my tear sheet files, as I find things that are really, you know, a lot of you ask, well, where do I get my inspiration? Well, I may not have any new ideas. It may just be something that I have stolen 
from some resource that I have previously referenced. It might be a magazine, it might be a book or whatever. And a lot of times, if they're a tear sheet, for example, it will end up on this bulletin board, particularly things that are ideas for the current season or the coming season or the coming holiday. So that leads me into my question of the day. I am someone who still likes to look at magazines. I have tear sheets from years ago. I bet you do too. So my question is, how do you corral all of those magazine tear sheets, all of those ideas, those ideas on paper? What is the way Tell me how you organize them because I'm constantly struggling with that and maybe later on in this in this show or maybe next week I'll show how I share some or how I store some of mine. But how do you wrangle all of those <laughs> ideas that come in tear sheet form? Well, I've got a couple of them here that are giving me some ideas for things I might want to do for my Easter tablescape. But this one in particular is very similar. Does that look familiar to you, Stuart? Does that kind of look like the flower arrangement we did last week? It does. This was a flower arrangement that I had in my head. I hadn't seen this picture for a while, okay. but I, I saw it and I referenced it as I was composing the flower arrangement I did for last week. And then I've got my inspiration for this week also right here. We may have to take images of we'll these later of it, because yeah. it's probably kind of glary. But when I want to replicate something or there's a tonal quality that I really like, a color palette that I really like, I can put that on my inspiration board. That's a no-brainer. I'm not the first person to think of that. But it might be a little treat for yourself. If you too come up with some kind of mood board or a place where you can visually access lots of different ideas that you've accumulated over the years. And then for those of you who haven't seen it, I've also got the copy of my front landscaping plan that I reference periodically because sometimes I just need to see it visually so that I can remember what my overall design um, vision was and my design thrust. So that kind of leads me into these flower arrangements. So how about we take a break here and go to the kitchen? Let's do it. Stuart, look, here is another one. I told you that I'd placed these in and around the cottage, and here's another one on an old book stand that used to belong to my second That's... mom, and I keep this one in the hallway. This is a different type of book, but it gives me ideas for I how I like to, to decorate the interior of the cottage. And the nice thing is, because I'm not looking at the book in its entirety, I can then just take one image, for example, this page or this bifold page and I can deconstruct what it is that appeals to me and then I can just take that vignette and I can try to recreate recreate it someplace else or even just one component of it. Okay guys the kids are acting up at, at the back of the class and I need to rein them in. My uh, Matt, our, our secondary photographer is here with Stuart. He's coming in to help us out today. Thank you, Matt. But you guys need to, you just need to cut it out. Hey, <laughs> I need to put on my school mom. My school mom. Yes. <laughs> um, so I wanted to show you this. I wanted to revisit this flower arrangement that I put together last week inspired by this image that was from a tear sheet from many, many years ago. Ago. And even though the flowers are completely different, the color palette, the textures, and the overall vibe, I think, is very much the same. So you don't have to replicate something exactly from your tear sheet or from your inspiration point. You just kind of have to get the thematic of it and the aura of it. And I think that it can beautifully, beautifully translate. Now, these are those um, Ostromeria and the Ranunculas that I used last week, but you can see they're starting to fade a bit. I can probably reduce this down to a smaller bouquet like I did with the one last week and those lime green carnations. So I'm going to do that and I'm also going to steal the container then to reuse this week for my new arrangement. So let's talk about daffodils because this is the new inspiration image which would be beautiful I think for Easter, but just uh, let's say even prior to Easter right now. And 
sadly, I don't have any any daffodils of my own to cut because as you know, I have moved from the fairy tale house to the cottage on the hill and, and I'm thrilled about it, but I am also mourning the loss of some of the things that I had in my old garden that I could cut and one of them was some daffodils. So I went to Trader Joe's this morning on my Friday flower foray, <laughs> which is my new treat to myself to help me uh, kind of make it over the hump of my garden in transition until I have a garden of my own. Now let's talk a little bit about daffodils. So many of you comment and have asked me when you get them from Trader Joe's or maybe from your grocery store, multiple sources, your farmer's market, when you get them, they're not in water like these are now. They are dry cut and they are just in a bucket with dry stems like this. Now, if you get, a, if you buy a daffodil bouquet and the buds are still very, very tight and showing some green, like most of these, then they can last in the vase for up to 10 days, but you do wanna do some conditioning first. And here's how you get them to last as long as possible. So when I got these home from Trader Joe's, what I did, was I just cut off about an inch of them. And what that does, by putting them in water, it starts kind of forcing the blooming process, but it also encourages them to drain out the sap from their stalks. And the stems contain kind of a toxic sap that if you combine with other flowers can decrease the life of say tulips or other flowers that you might want to compose along with the daffodils. I very, very infrequently put daffodils with anything else because I just love the voluptuous quality of having them all in abundance. And so that is what I'm going to do in my uh, floral bouquet with this as my inspiration point. So first what I need to do, so this is, this is the sausage making that I think you guys kind of like to watch. So out of this tree trunk, which I showed you last week is a hollowed out tree trunk. You can make your own. So let's deconstruct the flower arrangement from last week and construct the flower arrangement for this week. And this is how this Alstroemeria, this pink profusion bouquet came together. And you can see all of that was just in, is that a quart size? Quart size looks about like plastic that. leftover container. So I'm gonna set these aside and I will repurpose some of the, those flowers later by recutting the stems. But now I have my bare trunk. And I always think that whenever possible, you arrange your flowers by candlelight. <laughs> These are those one, th these are the wonderful thrift store finds. These are Ikea candle holders that I got at one of our thrifting adventures. I think you were there with me, Stuart. And by the way, we have got to go thrifting again. I I've been so. so busy here at the cottage that I, I haven't been thrifting for a while. So I, I need to scratch that itch. Okay, so back, I digress. <laughs> back to my, back to my daffodils. So you can see that this is hollowed out in the center. And I have a fresh quart container of water that I have already, well, maybe I haven't. Let me think back. What have I done, Linda? This is why you need to be more mindful <laughs> as your flower. You know, I need to be more Japanese and be more mindful in my flower arranging, I guess. Ikebana, is that what that is? That Japanese right flower right. arranging? Yeah. Okay, so I, I did not put any of this flower food in there, so. I did this time and typically when you get flowers, you will get flower food with them. And you don't have to have it, but I have, I think antidotally it has, it has, um, it has helped in, 
increasing the lifespan of these daffodils. Okay, I was looking for something and I don't see it, so I'm just gonna move on. Now, if I was going to arrange these with, in accompaniment with these other flowers, and by the way, it would be gorgeous. Wouldn't the arrangement be gorgeous it with would. these daffodils and the rest of these blooms that have very much a tone-on-tone -tone quality to them? And if I wanted to do that, here's the trick. I would cut these, cut my, bunch of daffodils. I would let the sap run out. I would come back a little while later. I would put fresh water in there and I would cut them again. And that way I make sure that all of that sap exudes out of them before I begin to arrange them. But these, since I'm going to arrange them all together in one big cheerful happy family, I don't have to worry about that quite so much. So as you can see, this fits in here and it just exposes a little bit of the plastic rim. This makes it nice, however, so when I have to come back later and I'm replenishing the water, I've got easier access to this yeah. than if it were really recessed all the way and flushed with the top of this container. So now all I have to do is just take these and I'm probably, even though I've cut these once, I am going to snip them once again just to help improve their water uptake. Now remember, these are going in and they're not in full form. They're not in full bloom. And they're not freshly cut from my garden. But if I had cut these from my garden, I would do the same thing. I would condition them the same way that I'm conditioning these. Now daffodils, unlike some of these other cut flowers that I have, these don't have any additional leaves or additional foliage or greenery that would uh, decrease the lifespan of the arrangement if some of that foliage was underneath the water, was submerged, because that could lead to some kind of bacterial issues that would decrease the life of the bouquet. But these, all of the leaves have already been removed and it's already looking happy. And you know what, I don't, I don't know why, but I just had a flash of a Winnie the Pooh <laughs> here in, in the 100 acre wood, That's Matt. That's kind of cool. What do you think? Uh, we know about Winnie the Pooh. Oh yes, you do. Uh, deep in the 100 acre wood where Christopher Robin plays. Okay, <laughs> I'm having kid flashbacks. So last week I was going through all of my children's books and I had already squirreled away those that were very, very precious to my boys. I probably told you all this before. Very precious to my boys that they wanted to keep. But then I had an abundance of extra ones. So rather than take them to goodwill, what did we do, Matt? Well, we gave them to my son, Jacob. <laughs> Who loved them. Who loved them. He loves them. And he said that last night he went to bed with the one of the uh, 3D dinosaur books. A pop-out book. A pop-out book. And he slept with it. And he slept with it. Slept in his bed with it. I have often slept with my books. Now I can already tell that even though this is going to be very pretty having these all in here, that I'm gonna need some kind of cascading something. Right, yeah. Yeah, that will hide the edge. Stuart, you intuited that well, too. Well, I did thought you it, not? I thought people were probably thinking it too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because you too are a member of our viewing audience, uh, yep. are you not? I'm watching it right now. Okay. <laughs> so meta. Yeah. Now, again, as these fill out, there'll be a lot more volume, and that will also help cover this. But there are, there's a couple of different tricks that I can use, which we may tap into a little bit later. What do you think you'll use? To, is that what you were just saying? I'm, th I'm thinking. I'm thinking as I'm composing. Uh -huh. So while I'm doing this, why don't we give everyone a break? They can take a potty break or a coffee break or whatever, and when they come back, I will have the solution to my dilemma <laughs> of what am I going to use around the rim. Well, I came up with a solution. 
which by the way, I had not come up with before I got to that stage of the <laughs> container and I realized it needed to be camouflaged. We keep it real here. Yeah, yeah, we keep life. it real here. You guys, <laughs> as I've often said, you get to see my uglies before the pretties. But it also, I think, is informative and instructive. And okay, how does something come together? So what I decided to do was use some of this dried grass and also some dried reindeer moss. You can buy this stuff at... Oh, any kind of craft store. At Michael's, at probably Walmart. Um, some of this stuff you could probably forage from your own backyard and it will be equally as pretty and even more fresh. But what I did was I pulled it out of this little storage cube. A lot of times you want to seem to want to know and are curious about where I store all of my things. Well, in this case, I store my floral supplies that I'm accessing frequently in just this tub. You can see I've got this kind of stuff in here. I've got some of my, I've showed you these before, my chicken wire, my flower cages, all of the flower food, any kind of Floral arranging accoutrement I keep in here. At least the stuff that I'm going to access pretty frequently and fairly quickly. I've got reserves in the basement, but I think that <laughs> looks, I think this is looking pretty. So here's all I'm doing is I'm just taking a wad of this. Wad being the official language. The official language. Of floral what it says arranging. On the yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And I'm just tucking it in any place where that plastic container meets the trunk, the tree trunk. And I think it, it looks very woodland and it looks very much as if I'm getting all of these guys, I have to give them a little hiccup, what I call a hiccup, the ones that are shorter. I kind of like them to look as if they're at different lengths. But I as I was driving home from Trader Joe's, I noticed, and by the way, this is, this is not sponsored by Trader Joe's or anything. <laughs> it's just, it happens to be where I got my flowers this time. Um, but as I was driving home, I noticed that there were so many cheery bouquets of daffodils, and I just thought they looked so sweet and I think this will very much simulate that look of how daffodils look in nature. What do you think, gentlemen? Oh, yeah, very spring. Do you concur? Yes. <laughs> and then again, because this container, you can see right there, this container is pretty much high above this surface. It will make it very easy for me to access and water it because these especially initially, are really going to soak up, soak up the water. I love this decorative little watering can. I've had it for years. My friend Elaine gave it to me. And what I love about it is it's got this very thin arched spout. So it is perfect for adding water to arrangements like this. I can get over the lip of the container and into the container with just the right amount of water without too much, I had a little disturbance there, um, but without too much of making a fuss for these flowers. And then all I have to do is just tuck that moss back in. And I think it's really, really pretty. And then I will just stage this where I want it to live. And as these daffodils continue to open, I think it's really, really going to be spectacular. And looks very springy, very eastery, and very much reminiscent of my inspiration pick. It really does. Now for another update in another part of the house. Well, one of the reasons I love what I do is because I meet so many incredible people virtually or in person. Well, one of my virtual friends, and I do believe I can now count him as a friend, is a gentleman that has been corresponding with me recently. And I'm, I'm just going to absolutely uh, mispronounce your name. I am, I am sure Brecht, B-R-E-C-H-T, but you can definitely find him on Instagram. And his account is just wondrous. I 
I have fallen in love with it. I've done a deep dive into his garden across the pond. It's really, really beautiful. He has so many elements of his garden that speak to my love for boxwood and hellebores and kind of a Scandinavian vibe. I absolutely adore it. And he has been so kind and has sent me some pictures and some renderings and things that have been inspired by the, um, the rendering that we did originally of the landscape plan of the cottage itself. And then he also did a charming exterior pic of the cottage. Anyhow, uh, just lovely, just lovely. Thank you so much. But I also, we will definitely put his URL, his profile below so that you can follow him too. And just a big shout out to him for his generosity and his kindness. I look forward to working together with him in the future, maybe for a garden tour or something of that nature. Um, but back to the garden, because even though it is rainy and wet and yucky out, and we're not mucking around in the mud. Nevertheless, if you live a garden life or a garden inspired life, you are, you always have the garden on your mind. And I have it on mine and I have all sorts of plans for seeding some of the plants that I had at the other house here in the garden. Now, so many of the beds aren't prepared yet, so it's not really worth my time to go in and scatter a bunch of seeds, a la, you know, Johnny Appleseed, and then have all of that <laughs> torn up when we do the soil amendment. But there are a number of them that I have been able to seed in and around the patio in between some of the pavers, in between the brick, in between the gray flagstone. And I've been doing that with some of this really sweet, sweet, let me see if I can, I'm trying to get some here for you, you can see how fine it is. This golden fever few, tanacetum. And I, and the reason I could do that is because that area is kind of already prepped the way it's going to be. And I'm hoping that I get a number of little, uh, little golden seedling darlings that will be coming up in between, the, in between those stones. I also have some poppies here. I've got larkspur. I've got Minoan lace. I have all sorts of different things. I've got some verbena bonariensis. I've got some forget-me-nots that my friend Chelsea gifted to me. And all of these, I'm not saying this is absolutely the optimal time in the spring for self-seeders or for me as the self-seeder to seed. Uh, that's, I, I, okay, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a, a loop. Twist, that was right? a mental yeah. <laughs> twist. Um, for me as the gardener to seed, this isn't necessarily the optimal time in my zone, but nevertheless, I want these to start populating and start getting established. And so we're having pretty reliable rains. So as soon as I can, I'm gonna be out there seeding a lot more of these flowers that I think will be very, very crucial to my look of, of a cottage garden and things that I have loved at my previous home. So I'm bringing a little bit of that place, a little bit of the fairy tale garden into this story book cottage at this, the uh, cottage on the hill. So I just wanted to let you know that I haven't, I haven't gotten out of the garden completely. It's just kind of a muddy mess out there, it's, Stuart. It's, uh, it's a little wet. Yeah, but I promised a few more updates inside. So let's go to the back of the house and the laundry room. Well, Stuart, this may not be the sexiest of updates, but it has proven to be so functional and I've really been surprised at how well this has worked out. So we are now standing in my laundry room area that still needs a lot of work. I have visited with a consultant at Lowe's and they're gonna be doing some built-ins. And by the way, how that works is you can schedule, and this is not a sponsored post, you can schedule a consultation with a designer at Lowe's and you could give them the measurements of the space that you are wanting to work with and then they can virtually design something for you based on how it will work for you, your desires. And then I, of course, provided him an image. And Stuart, I think we can show that image here, here of what we ended up with based on some of my specifications. So you can see here that this is all just a blank wall. 
with the exception of my Andy Warhol prints, <laughs> Andy Warhol that, prints that hung in my kiddos rooms when they were little but uh, this area has no storage in it this is a stackable washer and dryer I am buying the stacking kit this will stack and then I will have built-in cabinetry above here that will be pre-painted to match the color of the island in my kitchen this will also have a very slender um, broom closet. It will have an area where I can hang some of my delicate things and then also a folding section. So this will have a much more completed, much more sophisticated look that will be really just perfect for the, the scale and the, and the quantity of, of laundry that I do because now I'm an empty nester and I don't need that huge laundry room anymore. Now I did need some kind of, of storage area where I could put those things that I will be using until that new storage area is complete and that may be a couple of months, two to three months. And in the meantime, I have been using this kind of rather I don't want to say ingenious, but very, very handy storage mechanisms. So what I did was I bought these two, these two rattan bookcases and I thought or bookshelves rather, and I thought they would go in my living room, but they were too small. Happily and serendipitously, they fit beautifully on this wall in here. And then I ordered just a bunch of these canvas cubes that fit in here perfectly. And I got out my little label maker, my trusty label maker, and I just labeled all of the different things. Now, some of them, for example, I've got one down here that I call my toolbox. I have a much larger toolbox that's in my basement that, con that contains, I mean, everything you would want in a toolbox. But the bare necessities, those things that I use on an almost daily basis, hammers, nails, screwdriver, I can keep in this canvas tote and what I canvas cube. And what I like about it is that if I've got something small or I've got, you know, just oh, a battery or something like that, I don't even have to open them up and take them out of where they're, where they're living inside of these bookshelves. I can just tuck it in here. And it's been much more successful than I would have thought in terms of ease and storage and just functionality than I would have expected. So much so that I'll probably keep this here like this even after I get the new built-ins. So what do you think, Stuart? I think it's pretty handy. Pretty handy, pretty handy. It's a, it's a shallow profile. Even Hubs has been able to use them and figure out my storage system because everything is kind of arranged in alphabetical order. I especially like this one called Jamie Stuff. <laughs> Jamie Stuff. Just Jamie Stuff. Yeah, just the stuff of life Those, <laughs> that I don't know what to do with that belongs to him goes in here. And here, of course, you can see here's my floral container and this one gets yeah, used. One. Yeah, this one gets used almost on a daily basis. So that's just a little bit of update. Like I say, not too sexy, folks. But, <laughs> but I think that sometimes small is beautiful. And for me, I think this is going to be just the ticket. Now let's move on. Well, welcome to the primary bedroom. I guess you're not supposed to say master bedroom anymore. This is really? a primary bedroom. And I've made a couple of changes that I wanted to share with you and also ask another question of the day. So I've got um, my bedding on my bed is reversible and I can obviously reverse it from one side to the next. And I think I, I just like that. I like the flexibility of it, but I also like the fact that then without even buying new bedding, I can change seasonally uh, my sheets, my shams, my bed covers. I can change them seasonally without incurring additional expense. So that's my question of the day for you. As the seasons change, as we're going into spring, are you changing out the look 
of your bedroom, whether it's your bedroom or really any of your living spaces. Are you putting on new slip covers? Are you uh, putting away throws and bringing out more springy time throws? Um, what do you do to kind of turn seasonally turn over some of the decor items in your house? Now, uh, let me proceed, I guess, with a very few changes that I've made. So, but starting with, someone had asked me, okay, where did you end up putting that gorgeous orchid arrangement? And even though I think we did a segment on it, so many people weren't sure. And this is that beautiful orchid arrangement that I made with Phoebe, darling Phoebe at Calvert's. It is still going strong and I absolutely love it. And I also, I, I was thinking last night that there are you know, we, it's become almost cliche. You know, you get a glass of wine, you take a bath, you light your candles, and it's how you, you show yourself loving care and self-care at the end of the day. And it sounds so cliche, but you know what? It's true. <laughs> and it's not so much because you're lavishing care on yourself as much as it is you're kind of just beautifying segments of your life and segments of your day. So in the evening, sometime in the afternoon, if I'm here by myself and it's cool and it's cold out, I will light all of my candles and I'll, I'll set a timer on my phone to remember to blow them out. But it is such a simple thing and why not do it? Mm -hmm. Right, Stuart? I mean, again, it is kind of cliche, but so many people read about it, but do they really practice it? And, um, and so I really try to do that because I have found that it's very satisfying, almost sensual for me to strike a match and light my candles. So I do that. And last night, drum roll please, I have shared with you the ongoing <laughs> can't issue. Can't do a drum roll with my mouth. I okay, was going to try. Do a drum roll. <laughs> uh, well, I've shared with you the ongoing issue that I have had with my bathroom tub faucet and getting hot water out of it. And this may be a little plumbing tip that will be helpful to you as well. So as a little bit of history, I had three different plumbers come out to try to get me hot water to my fancy new freestanding tub with the standalone faucet that goes to the tub and I just couldn't get hot water, hot water there. Well, finally, the third plumber, after I went to some unnecessary expense to buy a whole new faucet assembly, finally figured out what the issue was and shared it and fixed it and so now I can finally take a hot bath. So, number one, let me address so, so many of your concerns, which I, I respect about having privacy because this bathroom is on the front part of the house. Well, number one, we did our test, didn't we, Stuart? We did. To make, or I should better, I should better say my husband did the test. Well, yeah, but I mean, the test was at done. at night with the blinds <laughs> down, you could see anything inside. You could see any kind of silhouette or, or whatever, and no, you, you could not. So this is definitely, a shade that I can automatically, with a battery-operated remote, put up or put down, and it does block any kind of visibility into the bathroom at night. But if I also want privacy from the bedroom into the bathroom, if we've got guests or something that might be roaming around out in the hall, then since this used to be a porch, <laughs> I can just open or close these sliding porch doors that are mirrored glass, mirrored bevel glass on the back side or front side, depending on which way you're standing. And I just really, really like that because in the evening I do like to shut this all up, light my candles and do that movie thing where you get a glass of wine and you light your candles and you get in a bubble bath because I, I just think that's a little bit of heaven. So, here was the issue with the tub. I thought it was the faucet. I completely exchanged out the faucet assembly. Still no hot water, which was very, very frustrating to me. This time, however, there were two plumbers. One plumber was used to working on old houses, and the other plumber was used to working on new construction. 
And it was the new construction plumber that had the answer to this dilemma. And that was, it wasn't the regulator in the uh, mechanism of the faucet itself, because we had taken out the regulator and I still couldn't get any hot water. It wasn't anything wrong with the way it was connected to the interior, to the internal plumbing of the house itself. What it was a factor of was something called a mixer and it is a little gray device. I believe they called it a mixer that's underneath my sink. Plumbing tips with Linda Bond. Yeah, plumbing <laughs> tips. I'm probably just really brutalizing that. But there's something, I believe he called it a mixer that really, apparently new construction has to have so that it can regulate the temperature coming out of the faucets to prevent scald. And I'm, I guess it was somehow adjusted so that it didn't apply to the tub. And once we set that, voila, magically, I was able to take a hot bath that I have been waiting to do for two months now in my fancy new bathroom. So a little bit about the decorating that's, that's in process here. Over this long, very narrow console table, which we will put a link to. I've showed it to you before. It used to live in the office at the fairy tale house. But over this table, I am going to have a whole matrix, a whole gallery wall of photographs, which will be very symmetrically and very clearly aligned, like you see in, in um, some books and, and maybe in your own home. But it will be a spectacle of nothing but her gorgeous photographs, which will be so fun for the two of us to go through and very carefully select and curate which ones from her beautiful photography that I want to use in this space. And they will all they will all be framed identical, identically and then hung in a gorgeous grid that will absolutely consume this wall. It will be very, very special for me and I think very beautiful. And then I also want to get a swivel chair that I will have in here, probably covered in terry cloth or something. I think I've mentioned that before. I have not gotten it yet. That's something that I'll probably buy locally and will be on the look for. I want a really beautiful rug to go in here. This one is just kind of a placekeeper until I find exactly what I want. And then of course I'll be bringing in some more plants. You can see over here, I've got a gorgeous, I've got a gorgeous orchid in here, one of my battery operated lights, and my shower cap <laughs> that I've got here on the vanity that I think is really beautiful. And then I'm gonna mention this again because heretofore, this just about blew Matt's mind. Yes. My, <laughs> my toothpaste tabs that you chew and then you brush your teeth with, to prevent all of that messy toothpaste tube yuckiness that is just ubiquitous in your bathrooms. And I can't stand it. And especially if you have little ones or um, if you just have anyone that isn't real fastidious and who amongst us is with their, <laughs> with their bath. I'm the worst. <laughs> with their toothpaste tube, it's, it's really hard. So this has solved that dilemma and we will put a link to those below. I've showed them before. And yes, I think in the community tab, I showed you guys how I was gonna bring my candelabra into my, into my bathroom. This is that one that I thrifted mm -hmm. years ago. And what's fun, for me anyway, is that you can see that there's no candles in here because I burned them down to the nubs last night as I was taking my bath. So that with my candlelight, with my orchids, with uh, some recovering topiaries, it really just was the perfect end to the perfect day because I got to just do nothing but piddle in my own home. It was really, really fun. And I haven't had that opportunity in a very long time as I live my own garden-inspired life. You go out and live yours.